Hello everybody, this is Lara with your weekly video for the S&P 500 for the week ending Friday 25th of November 2022, Thanksgiving week. A bit late but I hope that everyone in the United States had a really lovely Thanksgiving. I expect next week a little bit more upward movement and it may end if price comes to touch the upper edge of the Elliott channel which is a resistance line or so on the technical analysis charts the line's the same. Two targets 4068 looks more likely thereafter 4118 but I think that trend line might be a better guide to where this bounce may end rather than the price targets. The next move for this market I expect will be a third wave down when this bounce ends and it may end early probably or maybe mid next week. The target for the bear market end remains the same at 3144. Weekly chart. The Elliott wave count sees a cycle degree fourth wave over here at the end of the COVID crash March 2020 and the start of a cycle degree fifth wave. I'm not seeing cycle wave five over here because that would be a trend change at grand super cycle degree according to my larger monthly and quarterly charts that would be an absolutely massive bear market it would be expecting if I were to move this up one degree and see it over here and there was only two months bearish divergence between price and the AD line at this high and so that indicates a more shallow bear market is more likely than a deeper bear market. If there was more divergence between price and the NYSE all issues AD line I would consider a grand super cycle degree trend change up here but there isn't so I'm not going to do that yet. Only if we see a new low below 2191.86 would I then have an incredibly bearish wave count and so if this price point is breached then that would be very very bearish indeed. While this while price remains above this invalidation point this is my main wave count because it has a higher probability. The wave count considers cycle 5 as an incomplete impulse with primary wave 1 over here, primary 2 an incomplete zigzag and then it needs 3, 4, 5. Primary wave 2 a zigzag subdividing 5, 3, 5 labelled intermediate A, B, C. Intermediate C unfolding as an impulse with minor wave 1 an impulse, minor wave 2 almost complete as a zigzag and then it needs 3, 4, 5. Minor wave 2 may end at resistance at the upper edge of this channel. This is an Elliott channel drawn from the start of A to the end of B, a parallel copy on the end of A, also perfectly tested by this peak labelled minor 2, may be again tested by this second wave correction. Minor 2 may not move beyond the start of 1, above 4325.28. The target so far is for intermediate C to reach equality in length with A at 3144, but when I have minor waves 3 and 4 complete within intermediate C, then I'll be able to add to the target calculation at minor degree, so at that point in time it may widen to a small zone or it may change. Let's take a look at the daily chart where this high of intermediate B is this point up here. Here's minor wave 1, a really good looking 5 wave impulse and minor wave 2, a fairly decent looking 3 wave zigzag which is incomplete labelled A, B, C. Zigzag subdivide 5, 3, 5 and they're the most common Elliott wave corrective structure. Within minute C, which must subdivide as a 5, Minuet 1, 2, 3 and 4 all look to be complete. The first target is for Minuet 5 to reach equality in length with Minuet 1 at 4068. If price gets to that target and the structure is incomplete or it just keeps going up, the next target 4118 for Minute Wave C to reach equality in length with Minute Wave A. And this but again I think the upper edge of the Elliott channel which is copied over from the weekly chart may be a better guide to where upward movement finds resistance. It's almost at the 200 day moving average now as well. And the target for intermediate C to end remains the same down here and on the way down we may find support at the lower trend line or minor wave 5 could break through support and have an overshoot of the lower edge of that channel. That's pretty common for C waves. At the daily chart level, if we move the degree of labelling with an intermediate C up one degree, it's possible the bear market was over here and the next bull run, primary wave 3 has begun. There's not enough strength in this upward movement to indicate that this is a third wave and there isn't enough evidence at this low to indicate that this is sustainable and so this wave count is an alternate. If minor 
If primary three is underway, then within it no second wave correction may move beyond its start, below 3491.58. And that's the only alternate that's left at this time. Here's the uh, resistance line for this bear market. It's the same as the upper edge of that Elliott channel. Price is getting pretty close to it. It may be reached early next week. Look out for resistance, 4160, but that's above the trend line now, so I don't think price is going to get up that high. Support currently about 3950. Volume very light this week, but it is a holiday week and it's a short week, so that's to be expected. We really can't read anything into that. But an upward week slowly drifting higher. On balance volume in a small range, no signal this week. ADX declining at the weekly chart level, no clear trend at this time frame. RSI neutral, money flow neutral, stochastics neutral, and ATR overall flat as price is whipsawing and overall moving higher. Whipsawing as in it's been flat for a while since here down up down up and price is just flat throughout this. At the daily chart level resistance 4050 we can see that resistance line here coming up pretty close. Volume declining as price moves higher but again it's a holiday week and Friday session was a short session so we really can't read anything into that. On balance volume in a narrow range, no signal at the daily chart level. ADX indicating an upward trend in an early stage at this time frame and RSI not overbought. There's still quite a lot of room before these indicators get extreme but that trend line is probably going to provide resistance before that. Money flow also neutral, stochastics overbought but the market's trending so we use RSI not stochastics and ATR declining as price moves higher, absolutely normal behaviour for this market. Both price and breadth moved higher this week. No new divergence, but breadth is moving higher. Uh, price is moving higher a little bit faster than breadth. So there is a little bit of underlying weakness in there. Not divergence, but there is some weakness evident. At the daily chart level, both moved higher on Friday. No new divergence there. Between price and the NASDAQ AD line, there's very long-term divergence over a decade from March 2009. This has been an evident before though and it didn't necessarily lead to a huge bear market but it is falling a lot more strongly and a lot more quickly and the bond market also has been crashing quite substantially for quite a while. So this is all very bearish. Now this would support a grand super cycle degree trend change but I'm not going to go there if the NYSE all issues AD line is not is it only has two months of bearish divergence at the all-time high. If that had like maybe four or five months divergence, I could publish a very bearish wave count. I'm just not prepared to do so while the NYSE All Issues AD line doesn't have that bearish divergence. But it's here in NASDAQ and this could develop further as the bull market comes to an end and finally ends. And for the shorter term, there was some bearish divergence here that was resolved at the last low, and now price is moving higher. NASDAQ AD line also moving higher, no new short term divergence. There's longer term divergence between the March 2020 lows and NASDAQ AD line as well. This is also very bearish, but again, not matched by the NYSE All Issues AD line. And price and inverted VIX both moving higher. Again, inverted VIX has made a swing high. Price on a closing basis has again not. This divergence is bullish for the short to mid term and supports the view that price may move a little bit higher early next week, possibly to have that divergence resolved and then it'll be ready to fall. By resolved I mean if price on a closing basis makes new highs above this prior weekly candlestick here on a closing basis, then the divergence would be resolved. Both VIX and VVIX, sorry, VVIX moving higher this week, VIX moving lower, with volatility of VIX increasing, this divergence is bearish for the short term for price. At the daily chart level on Friday, price moved very slightly higher, inverted VIX moved lower. That's bearish divergence, but it's so weak because there was just so little movement from price. I'm not going to give any uh, weight to that in the analysis. For Friday, VIX moving higher, VVIX moving ever so slightly higher as well, no new divergence there. 
that's all from me with your S&P analysis this week. I hope everyone's looking forward to an awesome weekend.